I set out to try to uncover the biggest achievements, world records, and unique feats from the Animal Crossing community that spans the entire franchise history. Animal Crossing is a really interesting series because it's an entire game series that's based on essentially taking your time and playing the game on a regular daily basis that matches up with like the real world clock and calendar. So when it comes to ideas like getting a speed running world record, it's not really necessarily something you think about at least right away. But boy oh boy, can it be very interesting and sometimes hilariously tedious to look into the process of what it takes to just break all of the rules that Animal Crossing kind of has implicitly been built upon and then just try to go for the fastest completion possible. Across all of the game series, I think it's very interesting whenever players go above and beyond and kind of transform the way that they play Animal Crossing into a completely different experience for the sake of, you know, getting some virtual clout. And while this video is not just going to be talking about some crazy speed runs across the entire Animal Crossing series, there's some other interesting world record accomplishments that have also happened in the Animal Crossing series that we're going to talk about as well. So strap in because there is a lot to unpack here. So let's go ahead and jump into this. Now when I was presented with this idea, I thought to myself, huh, where would I even start? What would anything world record related to Animal Crossing even look like? And I stumbled across Animal Crossing New Horizons speed runs, which is kind of a dead category nowadays. But a couple of years ago, when Animal Crossing first released, and it was, you know, all the hype and buzz was around Animal Crossing. Of course, there are speedrunners trying this game out. I was actually surprised that for the most part, there's not as many people running this game nowadays. But then when you look into the actual details of what a regular Animal Crossing speedrun kind of entails, you maybe realize why not too many people would pick this as their number one game to speedrun. But it makes the completion of these speedruns, I think, even that much more unique. So in the Animal Crossing speedrunning community, there are multiple different categories that speedrunners can compete in. And the first one that I decided to take a look at was the paying off all of your Animal Crossing debt speedrun, which streamer and speedrunner Pants managed to do in one hour, 17 minutes and 56 seconds, which is kind of insane. I mean, it took me months to pay off my debt and I played really aggressively. So what can we do and what can we see on how to just like high speed your way through an Animal Crossing game like this? Now, if you were going to run Animal Crossing New Horizons, the early part of this game is pretty much very similar to what you would experience in your regular Animal Crossing playthrough early on. You gotta design your character, not really. Pick out your island, travel there, talk to Tom Nook, do those things. There's a lot of clicking through dialogue as quickly as you can just to move things along. I'll spare you some of like the nitty gritty details of trying to optimize the earliest stage of the speedrun, which essentially is just trying to get through like the little tutorial stage far enough along so that you can activate local co-op mode, which is kind of a forgotten feature of Animal Crossing New Horizons, but essentially you can have a second player just kind of like drop it in and out to help the main player complete whatever they're doing. They're very limited in what they actually can do, but way back in the base build of Animal Crossing, New Horizons before the updates, so if you have the old version of Animal Crossing, you want to make sure you don't download updates, I guess. There was an old duplication glitch you could do very early on by using this second player, and that brings us to the most crucial and critical step of speedrunning debt payoff in Animal Crossing New Horizons the epic box spinning strategy. Logan, play some epic dubstep music to hype this moment up. So essentially by spinning a box and properly timing a pickup in the base version of the game, you could essentially recreate duplicates of the same item over and over again. And since early on, you get a piece of mail from Nintendo gifting you a special Nintendo Switch, you can actually utilize this trick and duplicate it over and over and over and over and over again by spinning this box and essentially rack up quite a few Nintendo Switches that you can then sell and make quick profit. And this goes on and on and on. You then sell the Nintendo Switches to Timmy and then you repeat this process for like 45 minutes or so. So many box spins. Honestly, I'd hate to be the one running the speed run, but I am so intrigued watching this recording from 2020 being accomplished. This is insane. You know, at this point in the run, I assumed that, you know, maybe there'll be some interesting crazy gameplay, like some advanced time traveling to rack up your savings account, or maybe you played the turnip 
game and hope you get a good roll and then bam, you have all the money to pay it off. But nope, just more box spinning. This is the way. You just do this over and over and over and over and over and over again until finally you have enough money. Then we just see some quick time traveling to reset the day and paying off all the debts one by one by one. And somehow after all of that, getting the last bit of debt paid off was completed by pants back in 2020 in just one hour, 17 minutes, 57 seconds. Is this the way Animal Crossing New Horizons was originally intended to be played? Absolutely not. I think that's obvious, but that makes this run so much more interesting because that was just like super speed to get something done that usually takes players an incredibly long time. Okay, while the New Horizon runs are interesting, what about some of the other Animal Crossing speed runs that are out there? There's Animal Crossing New Leaf that had an interesting run by Lemons Pick Run, who had a one hour, 32 minute and 31 second speed run of all debts paid off, but I gotta give credit to second and third place Joshua is drunk and orchestra as they also completed it like around the same amount of time just slightly slower what crazy tricks are gonna happen here well interestingly enough for Animal Crossing New Leaf speedruns it looks like the duplication glitch is kind of the way to go but this time it's done by digging a hole in the ground and retrieving items into the inventory from the hole that runner Joshua is drunk actually posted a brief explanation in the description of his video saying that the game is programmed in a way that only a certain number of tiles are rendered around the player at any single time and that the number of tiles is increased when the player reaches the beach section. So then if you put down a ton of patterns and fruit trees, you can actually make the game exceed its memory limit so that when you do a digging item retrieval glitch like this, you're essentially making the game exceed its memory limit and the game only has enough memory to add items to the player's inventory and not quite figure out how to remove the item from the hole. This would get patched out of the earlier Japanese release of the game in update 1.1 and would be not included in the 1.0 release of international versions of the game, but if you have a version of the Animal Crossing Japanese 1.0 version, this glitch works. But hey, in this version of the glitch, you can just dig up straight money and then completely duplicate that over and over again. These types of runs are incredibly interesting, and for the sake of this video, we're just going to do kind of like the base surface level of these types of tricks, but essentially being able to dig up money over and over again definitely makes paying off debts a whole lot faster than you might initially think. So it's really no surprise that in this type of category where glitches are allowed and you're just going for all debts, someone was able to pull it off in just an hour 32 minutes. Drew Pag from the United States of America actually recently got the Animal Crossing City Folk All Debts Paid World Record. Now finally City Folk is a little bit different or at least a little bit interesting in the course of how this one is speed ran as in City Folk you actually have to set your clock specifically to around Christmas time because we're going to talk to Jingle a little bit and jingle our way into paying off all of the debt quickly. Okay so for this run to work Drew Pag starts at 7:50 p.m. on December 20th. 24th, 2000 for City Folk. The trick here by choosing to do Toy Day instead of like just a regular day is that Jingle will be in your town and you can then get some presents from him, which then in turn can get you extra money from Tom Nook, giving you some extra bells on top of everything. So as long as you get to Jingle before 10 p.m. in your game, you can sell those two gifts. It'll give you like 24,000 bells on top of selling everything else that you have as your villager on day one. Now, of course, for the starting part of the game, you have to go through all of the regular chores and errands that kind of act as a tutorial for City Folk. And during this you want to make sure you keep a flower on hand. I know it sounds weird, but trust me. But essentially, if you can find Jingle, you can get a gift from him. And then if you go inside and put a flower accessory on your face, you can go back outside and get another gift from him. So there is a little bit of RNG based on where Jingle spawns because you want him to be close to a building so you can quickly do this and save some time. But once you have those two gifts, you can open up the gifts and then sell everything to Nook, then deposit the money into the ATM. From there, we see Drew do a ton of different time traveling things, which are trying to figure out what's going on here. I think we did to the the best of our abilities. I think for the most part he's min-maxing how far ahead you could set your Wii to, but after multiple time travels, like 12 times of it, you can look at your bank account and BAM! There's a lot more bells than there once was. From there we see Drew take out 386,000 bells exactly. Now the reason he didn't withdraw all of the money is because he's now gonna have to time travel forward to at least the next day, but we'll see he goes further than the next day, so that Tom Nook will be ready to upgrade the next level of the house. The reason he didn't take all the money out of the account initially was because over time, and years in this case because of the time traveling on the Wii, that rest of the money that's just like sitting there in the savings account is accruing interest, which will essentially allow Drew to pay off the higher debts when the time comes around. Ultimately, by doing this over and over again, the savings account will have enough interest to pay off the final debt in debt five, allowing Drew to complete this in just 35 minutes and 52 seconds. Now this specific Christmas strat is a bit of a newer strategy as previously players did a similar strategy but instead did Bunny Day, you know, with that zipper tea bunny. But 
we'll actually talk about that in a little bit in this video, surprisingly, so more on that later. Still, it's incredible to see what other runners in the Animal Crossing community have been able to achieve in just trying to fly through their favorite games as quickly as possible. Animal Crossing Wild World's also really interesting. You might notice that from people that show up on the leaderboards, a lot of the names are the same runners who play other Animal Crossing games. Like, for instance, Drew Pag also has the world record for Animal Crossing Wild World. But one thing that's interesting about Wild World is the game itself for the all debts paid category is actually split into two different categories. One called the letterhead glitch category, which is a glitch we'll go into in a second, followed by another category for no letterhead glitch. Now, the letterhead glitch can save sometimes over 10 minutes of gameplay, so we'll explain what both of these categories are. So essentially, this letter header glitch involves you inputting certain symbols and letters into a letterhead, then removing some, then adding some, and doing it in a specific order that essentially affects the deeper code in Animal Crossing Wild World. But long story short, depending on what you enter here, and of course only in the 1.0 Japanese-only version of the game, does this work, but you can influence the game to change up the game in other specific instances so that other things are kind of moved around in a way that optimizes speedrunning. Sure, you still have to do the regular errands at the beginning of the game, but all of a sudden being able to do things like move stores closer nearby where you live can save quite a significant amount of time in a speedrun like what you would see in Wild World. I'll be honest, that's probably one of the more confusing glitches to understand because it involves overloading the header with too many characters, and then all of a sudden there's a lot of possibilities of what you can do, like getting a ton of extra bells, or of course having other weird effects like buildings being closer together. But with this glitch being able to be done in a game, you can essentially write any item you want into your inventory, filling out your catalog, and obviously with all of these tools at your convenience, you're able to probably beat an Animal Crossing New Leaf speedrun incredibly quickly. I'll talk about this more in a little bit, but I actually reached out to Drew and he actually clarified a little bit about how by using this overflow in the header letter, you can essentially write directly into the game's memory region. He even included a link to this image, which kind of shows how the memory can end up influencing different aspects of the game. Like for instance, building the seeds so the town's the way that you want it to be. Really cool stuff. But with that, there was another category split off from the main category, which is for Animal Crossing Wild World speedruns that don't use this glitch and just utilize the in-game mechanics. And despite that this process is a little bit slower, this version of the run requires you doing that old-fashioned bell duplication glitch that a lot of people remember doing way back in the earliest days of Animal Crossing Wild World. I was actually surprised to recognize a glitch that was so iconic from the older days still being used in speedruns, because obviously you're playing on like an older version of the game that doesn't have any updates that patch that glitch out. And then on top of that, if you look at both categories here, Drew Pag has the world record in both of them. So not only has he mastered City Folk speedrunning, but he also mastered Animal Crossing Wild World with the letterhead glitch and also without the letterhead glitch, completing these games in 35 minutes and 23 minutes respectively. It's actually some pretty insane stuff. Now the original GameCube version of Animal Crossing is really interesting. Speedrunners have managed to get this down all the way to 33 minutes and this runs kind of interesting in its own right especially since it goes all the way back to the GameCube days fortunately enough though fourth place runner Nick who runs a YouTube channel cool Nick YouTube uploaded a really easy to understand guide which for a newbie like me kind of helped a lot in just understanding what's going on here but just to get the gists of what the run looks like the beginning train ride is just a bunch of button mashing and essentially this section isn't done in like two minutes or less usually speedrunners will consider abandoning the run and just starting over and then the next big part that speedrunners look for is where tom nook's store and post office end up being if they're not in acre a2 or a4 essentially runners will reset here because they want it to be in those specific places to speed up time now in animal crossing for the gamecube those two locations will only spawn in the top acres so you have like a one in five chance that they'll be in the right spots and since so much of the later part of the speedrun is just running between these two objectives it's really important that they're kind of close together from there you do the normal tutorial part of the game and there is a chance that you could get some items earlier which could save a little bit of time like a table or a tape deck they're going to be used for a glitch later on but you could still order these from the catalog if you don't necessarily get them then if you played on the gamecube version you may know that there's like these codes that you can give which can give you bells just directly i guess they're kind of like cheat codes or maybe they were e-reader codes they're like little secret promotional things that would be like spread online after people realize that you could just like go and type these numbers in but essentially this opens up the door to different possibilities and different run routes but there are a bunch of codes you can enter to get items in this speed run specifically we see the autumn metal being used and then once again we see another duplication glitch another precise one that's a little confusing to try to pick up if you have no idea how they work but by maneuvering the table and the tape deck together and other items you can end up spawning in five autumn metals that will respawn once you 
you enter and leave the house. And this starts this gameplay loop of essentially selling the items, paying off debt and repeating this process over and over again, getting the medals and selling them and paying off debt again until all the debts are paid off. And while this is probably a route that a lot of like early speedrunners trying to get into the game typically use, there is a more advanced modified version of the speedrun that the world record uses, where essentially you could use different RNG parts of the game to calculate what the turnip price could be based on the different numbers and trends. Essentially, we've looked into the whole like turnip algorithm before on this channel. It's very complicated, but just basically know there is some level of prediction you can do and it's different from each Animal Crossing game. But by trying to do this process into your main world record speed run, you can guarantee a turnip price of either 74 or 128. And if it's that higher one, you can make a ton of money much faster. There's just a whole lot of steps involved in calculation. So there's like Excel sheets out there where you can calculate these two and it's pretty complicated, but very impressive nonetheless. Now, mind you, so far, we just only have looked at like the main speedrunning category for all debts. There are other speedrunning categories out there, like getting gold tools or just like paying off your first debt. And you know what? It's really cool to look at this process that's taking the game into a completely different direction. And in my search to figure out this specific stuff, I managed to kind of get to interact with a couple of Animal Crossing speedrunners myself because I had questions and I didn't know what I was talking about. I still am not 100% sure I know everything I'm talking about. Like I said earlier, I even got in touch with the Drew Pag, the guy who had the city folk in Wild World speedrunning world records. And I really appreciate him just being willing to kind of help me out answering some specific questions that I had about all of these. Matter of fact, he streams pretty regularly on Twitch, so there will be a link in the description down below. There's not too many great Twitch streamers who play Animal Crossing nowadays, so it's really cool to find someone entertaining who's also doing something incredible but we're not done with this video just yet oh no because there are some other things that i've found in this rabbit hole search of just interesting and unique animal crossing runs we need to talk about cold Eggman for a second this dude was the first guy i reached out to when i decided to try to approach figuring out some of this stuff and never would i have thought there would be documentation for a specific type of run for animal crossing new leaf that cold Eggman actually went for okay let's back up a little bit now cold Eggman has a little bit of a reputation already in the Animal Crossing speedrunning community. Not only was he really knowledgeable and helping point me in the right direction for a lot of this video, but he has a lot of speedrun across the franchise. He has multiple top 10 finishes, along with an impressive second place for Animal Crossing on the GameCube and the N64 version. But if you're like not a fan of like the typical speedrunning like intensity, Cold Eggman did something incredibly unique. Back in 2021, Cold Eggman was like, hey, you know what? I'm gonna 100% speedrun Animal Crossing New Leaf, start to finish, just to prove that theoretically it is possible to do. And mind you, one of the badges required for a 100% completion or speedrun of Animal Crossing New Leaf is that you have to have at least 500 hours of playtime. So Cold Eggman spends months planning this whole thing out. He routed it out, planned how long it would take. He had to buy extra Nintendo 3DSs because there's a street pass badge and you have to like pass a certain amount of extra towns to get the badge, which would count towards the completion. And then he spent the next 600 plus hours playing Animal Crossing New Leaf day in and day out for an average of 12 hours a day with like an hour break to go eat and go outside for a bit. He would sleep and kept a camera running just to show that the game was actually running and he was being played. And he went through getting the full encyclopedia done, all the golden tools, all the gold house parts unlocked, all nookling upgrades, all the main street shops unlocked, the second floor of the museum, Katrina shop, all the menus had to be fully unlocked, all the public works projects completed, all gold badges, all unlockable islands, secret storeroom, QR code machine, and colored contacts, and have the max town tree, including the full game catalog, excluding DLC. And he started the timer the day that he started the new save, and that ran all the way until he completed everything. 638 hours later, it was completed. He has a playlist over on his channel where he documented the entire process beginning to end, and it's definitely worth doing a look through. And I mean, at that point, he probably deserves a subscription too because this is just crazy so you know what cold eggman i commend your dedication here after looking at this it kind of led me down this rabbit hole of wondering what else is possible when it comes to 100 percent completion runs and then i remembered we've talked about this other one before brian mp16 is like a legend in the animal crossing community this dude was the first player ever to 100 percent complete all of the original animal crossing game beginning to end including some of the hardest to achieve 
achieve items like this post office model all done without doing any type of extra glitches where you like type in codes or anything to get free bells quickly or any manipulation just through legitimate gameplay himself and mind you he also does runs where he plays in the other categories does regular speed runs other types of glitch allowed runs but he put together a really cool like documentation of his journey to try to get all of this done in his own legitimate way with a specific rule set that he had built for it and I don't really want to like steal the thunder away from his video by going too in depth on like the process it takes but the one big thing that's really interesting is that one of the hardest items to get is this like post office model item only once a player has reached 999 million bells in their savings account which is an insane amount of money but just the journey in general on the original GameCube version is always really interesting because there's a lot you have to do if you're gonna go and like collect all the NES games get everything else cataloged and do all of that it's a big deal and you know what it's just really impressive to watch his video where he documents it all he has an impressive time of 344 hours just to get all of this completed legitimately now like we talked about earlier Brian MP16 also does regular speed running with some glitches allowed to complete the category of a hundred percent completion without you know having to spend 344 hours every time but there are other runners who also go for this 100% category matter of fact the top three runners are Brian MP16 our boy cold Eggman and then Nick the guy who did that tutorial on the GameCube version we talked about earlier I don't know I just think it's really cool to see familiar faces showing up in different types of categories throughout the Animal Crossing franchise also on the New Horizon side of things another runner known as P son actually managed to pull off a 100% completed Animal Crossing New Horizons doing all Nook Mile challenges and the complete museum and it just took you know 301 hours but look at all those nook miles achieved nonetheless this was a very wild ride going through all of these different achievements and triumphs that the animal crossing community has managed to pull off and pull together over the years i think that there is interest in some of these categories as obscure and small as the animal crossing speed running and challenge community might seem at the time now i do think if there was more attention given to the games they are very interesting and a lot of the times very tedious and specific and i think that that makes them special it sets these runners apart Apart from other types of running categories that are out there so it was a lot of fun diving into this and even getting to talk to some of the runners themselves but yeah if you enjoyed this video uh maybe subscribe give it a try i know if you're like on a tv or something it's like two extra clicks but it does help my channel out a lot and it ups the chance of you seeing one of my videos pop up in your recommended feed let me know if there's any other types of runs you'd like me to look into in the future also make sure you check out some of the people who helped me out with this video their links will be in the description down below all right thanks so much for watching we'll see you next time with a new video Oh.